This video goes over function and class templates. Uh, this is a very important topic because it is the underpinnings of how we can make our code generic and how we can uh, use class templates to build generic data structures for object-oriented programming. So let's start with function templates. A function template is, is a generic function, which means that, let's say, for example, we have a need to write a function that adds two numbers or adds two strings. So what we need is either we could go the path of saying, well, I have a, a type integer and I need to write a function that can add two integers, then I need to have a function that can add two doubles, and then I need to have a function that can add two strings or concatenate them together. That's three functions. And the reason why I would need to do three is because each of these functions is going to have a very clear expectation of what the type of the input parameter is going to be. Now, if we had, if instead of the simple add function, we had a very complicated function, the functionality is exactly the same, but the type of the parameter that's coming in is, uh, is, is going to be different, then we have potentially uh, the challenge of uh, adding huge amounts of code uh, in order to provide this flexibility for working with the same logic for different data types. And as you will see when we progress towards uh, classes and objects, that that we would need to do a lot of operations, different kind of operations and functionality on, on objects. And then we don't care what is the type of the object, we just want the functionality. And as you know, programmers can write a huge array of um, uh, uh, objects, which the C++ system programmer has no idea. And we have seen some of those issues come up in inheritance and polymorphism and how we've used polymorphism to solve some of those code problems. But this is a different, um, this, is a, this is a similar need, but in a different context of how can we create containers or how can we create functionality uh, in which the, fu the logic is the same, but the parameters or the objects or the types on which we're working is different, right? Uh, so, 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 so that's how, that's so that's a need for functional templates. A function template look exactly like a regular function, but instead of its regular type, there's going to be a type denotation, which is t. So let's say this is we would like to write a function that just calculates the square of a number. Instead of specifying integer or double, we can just say we are going to use the template and we are going to class call this. Um, t, we can even say type um, type name here or class, both of them would work. Uh, class is a little old fashioned, type name is, is a more recent, um, so that's what's given here. And then as you can see, the function is going to take in of any don't care type t and then perform the operation and return an item of the type t. Now here we have to be careful that this operation star, which is multiplication, it should be able to function on type. For example, if I pass a dog object here instead of a number, then I should be able to multiply a dog object, right? And this ties us to what we, the, the work with we did on operator overloading is that if you would like to pass objects which are not primitive, or for example, a string type on which the star, the multiplication operator is not working, then we have to be potentially prepared that this program will crash. And we have to then take care of this situation by um, overloading this operator. So this is what is the meaning that care should be taken that the type of the actual parameter should be supported by the operation in the template, right? Now here is, um, here is uh, what happens when, when we compile the program. When we compile the program with our square function, then it is the task of the compiler. So, so the important thing to be noted at, that this is not a runtime feature like polymorphism, like late binding. This is static binding. So at compile time, what's going to happen is that 
the compiler will substitute int for t if the programmer passes um, a, 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 very, a, a parameter of type int. So the compiler has a lot of work to do here. So it's going to go into this function call and, and determine that um, the type is an integer because it's been declared as an integer here. And then it's going to substitute inside the square function, it's going to substitute integer and put that code there, right? So that's, so, so, so under the hood, there is going to be a code fill for the, that particular type. Now you can also have multiple types because we have parameters, we can pass parameters of different types. Then we also have the ability to provide um, different uh, type names. And here, for example, this uh, function, it simply prints the numbers in the, pro in the sequence that they have come in and then reverses the sequence. And there are three different types of um, parameters. One could be an integer, the other could be a double, the third could be a string, or they could be objects and it just prints them in, in different order, right? We can also do function overloading, which means you can have a function of the same name, but it can have different types, right? Though it looks like, you know, if we have, uh, uh, if we have, um, uh, if we have function templates, uh, we would reduce the need for doing overloading. So what I'd like to do here is, Before I go into class templates, I'd like to take us, walk us through the code here. The link to this program is there at the end of the slides. So here, without looking into positive, negative number, now if you recall, positive number, negative number was used in our exception handling, and I'm going to build off of that example. But for now, let's just keep it simple and go to the square program here where I have declared a template to be of type uh, T1, and I'm going to expect a parameter of type T1 into A, and then it's going to output uh, the same type. I could have done T1, T2, and had it return of a different type as well. Now here's where I've defined my function. So it says just returns A times A, whatever is the type of the parameter coming in, that's going to be the type that's going to pass out. So here, let me actually call this function. I'm going to call this function. I'm going to say double a equals to, let's say double a equals to, for example, square negative. And so I'm passing a type double here. And then I can also do int a is equal to square um, five. So as you can see, I'm passing. Let me call it a, 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 because I think I'm using a in another place. So double a d and double a i. And here I would like to the square of a double is equal to, and then print this one out. A D and here I would do the same thing but for an integer. So as you can see the square function is taking in a i and then here of a of an integer. So as you can see the square of a double is hundred the square of an integer is 25. Now here, I would like to, this has actually printed the double as 100 and not 100.0. Uh, and we could, we could solve that if we include IOMANIP. If we do include IOMANIP, and as you know, and we would like to print this as a um, as a fixed point, and I'm going to do std standard fixed point. And when I do that and run this program again, though I think that is 
besides the point for the topic, but just for the sake of completeness. So as you can see here, it has printed the square of a double is 100.00. If we had set the precision to two, it would have chopped it off. But the point is that it has been able to pass a double to a square and also pass an integer to the square. And that has worked really well. We can also, uh, I would like you, encourage you to uh, try uh, type name T1, T3, and return it of a different type T3, <clears throat> right, where type name T3, and this can be, it can take in an element of one type and return it of a different type, or it can take in two items, one of T1 and the other of T2. So there's lots of room for uh, flexibility using function templates. So I'm just going to take this back to T1. So this is how function templates would work. Now let's go back and see <clears throat> how we can build on top of this for classes. What are our needs for classes? Um, we have, we could be, uh, for example, wanting to create uh, a container, which could be, uh, let's say, a linked list, or it could be an array, or it could be a vector. And we would like that to hold objects of different types. And you know, we do that using vectors. We usually, you have seen this before when we did something like standard vector of ints, and then we would also do standard vector of animal, right? Or, uh, or, or uh, of planes and cars or vehicle. So we have actually been using templates and these template uh, classes, vector is a template class and that's been provided to us by C++, but sometimes we would like to write our own containers. So here, in this case, a class template is used to create generic classes where the data that's coming into the classes could be animal, it could be string, it could be integer, it could be vehicle, and we want to have one single class, for example, a vector class that does all of that. And the methods, the data fields inside that class and the functions inside that class need to be able to handle uh, any type of object that's coming in, right? So that's, uh, and that is very powerful and that's a very useful concept. So, and why is it powerful? Because it allows us to do um, system software development uh, by uh, eliminating the need. Just think for a moment, if we needed to write a vector class for a vehicle, and then we needed to write a vector class for an animal, and then we needed to write a vector class for any other object that the programmer had, it would be impossible. There would be thousands of classes needed um, for as many objects as there are, and C++ would not be able to offer us a generic vector class that we could use to populate. And in turn, we may need to design system software that offers a similar service to our customers. And this is, and so, and so this is how uh, the classes, uh, the template classes would work. So let's take a look at the example that we have in our exception handling. And you see, we had a positive number and a negative number class. Now I have changed this positive number class to take any kind of uh, any kind of positive number. And I have changed the negative number to take any kind of negative number. And in my example, I will, I'm going to denote um, the positive numbers to be of type integer and the negative number to be of type double. And that's how I will use it. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to now comment out comment out this part just for now and say, well, what if the user user gave us we got a input number which is of type integer to start off with and then I pass this input to check number. Now here what I have done is I have changed this check number to be a, a template function so that it can take any type of value that's coming in and I would like to use it for an integer or a double. So 
it um, so what check number does is if its number is greater than the upper limit then it throws a positive number ex uh, exception otherwise if it's less than it throws a negative number the reason why greater than and less than is done is because i would like the positive numbers um, the numbers greater than to be positive numbers integers and the number less than to be negative numbers and that's double. So let's try this out and let's try this um, class template and function template that are working together on integers. So let me run this program. So as you can see it has, so it says enter a number and I enter the number, a large number because I'd like to throw the exception. And then it says, it prints a number, it says positive number out of range, and it ends the program. Now I'd like to mute this and try it for, to see how the check number template works for doubles. So I take in, declare a double, get the input, and call check number. This time check number, which is a template function, is going to take in a double. If, and I'm going to give it a, a very low negative number, which is a double, it's going to correctly call this template class negative number and populate it with that double, right? And so what's going to go in there instead of T is going to be double. It's going to pass that number and an exception is going to get caught here, which is of negative number double type. And it's going to say negative number out of range. And that's what I'd like to hopefully see when I run this program. So let me say minus 1034.67, negative double. You see negative number out of range, end of program, so it has caught this exception. I've used a combination of function template and class templates to make this happen. Now the last thing that I'd like to do is to create a container so let me go ahead and um, show you the template class that I created. My template class that uses a vector and the default constructor is empty. All it does is that it can take in an object of any type and push it into the vector and it can also print. So these are the simple functionalities that I have in this class. So let's go here and see what are the objects that I'd like to put into this vector. The objects that I'd like to put into this vector is that I'm creating are, initially I'm creating a positive number type object, which is going to be of type integer, and to another one called A1 and B, I'm going to push it into my template class, right? So T is a template class which, con which contains which is a container of positive integers. And here I'm creating T2, which using the exact same template class is a container for negative doubles. So you see the same template class is being used as a container for objects of positive number type, which contain integers and objects of uh, ob uh, negative number objects, which contain negative doubles. So and so I'm going to push these onto the vector t, print that, uh, print t, and then, uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is create negative number objects, uh, and then uh, put them of type double, and then this is going to be negative number. So let's change this to negative, and then print them. So let's run this program, and we should see, so as you see, we saw 1, 2, and negative 1. I'm just going to uh, change the C out and then I'm going to just say put a space here and then at the end of this I'm going to do standard and line just so we can see the output clearly so all right so let's run this program one more time. You see, 1, 2 came out of A and B, 1 and 2, and negative 1.5 and negative 2.25 came out of this. So our container template, our template class became a container to hold positive integer, positive number objects of type integer, 
and negative number objects of type double.